Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Face to Face 2. This event is organized by the Online Citizen. And um, uh, we are privileged, really, to have with us the four presidential candidates. Right? Please join me in giving them a big round of applause. <laughs> right. Why are we here? Very simple, because it's been a long time since we've had a chance to vote <coughs> for the president. Right? In fact, 18 years. And I remember in 19, 20, 19, I was going to say 23, 1993, when I was actually hosting the uh, live coverage of the presidential election, right, where President Ong Teng Chong was voted in. And um, so it's been a very long time. And in these years, a lot of things have changed on the ground. Right? And because we have not had the chance to actually vote, I don't think there has been sufficient information or sufficient interest in the role, in the responsibility, in the institution of the elected president. Uh, that's the reason why I believe there have been a lot, of, a lot of interest, a lot of questions, a lot of fairly complex questions that have been thrown up in this presidential election because of the 18-year hiatus. Right? Now, the questions are necessary. Some of them are complex. Some of them are pretty technical. Uh, but I think we need to be able to look at all the entire spectrum of questions, regardless of whether they are about the present reality or about what is ideal, and deal with them, if need be, philosophically, and not all technically. Because I think it's important for Singaporeans, for voters, to have a deeper sense of what this institution is about, what the potential of this institution would be, and also, what we are voting for, right? So that's the objective of this forum, to give all of us voters a much better chance of understanding what this job is of the elected president, the role, the relationship of the office of the elected president with the other institutions of the state, right? In particular, the prime minister, the cabinet, parliament, right? We need to have greater clarity in these areas and Therefore, by fielding questions that are important, that you consider important for yourself, and hopefully sentiments that are, that are representative of the sentiments on the ground, we'll be able to get insights from the four candidates. And through their insights, and the way they present their insights, the way they respond, or if need, in, in, in certain cases, the way they react to questions, would give us a better sense of who each one of these four candidates are. And that allows us the opportunity to feel, at least, that we are making a choice on the 27th in a more considered fashion. Right. Questions. We can have a few more questions, maybe two more questions, from people who haven't asked a question yet. Yes. Hi, thank you very much. Um, my name is Sunny, adjunct lecturer. I've actually just returned from uh, Europe and recently we had a conference in Berlin as well as uh, at the European Commission. And currently in Europe, there is this uh, strong lobby uh, requesting that there's 30% of women uh, to enter into parliament. So, and in decision-making roles, because, you know, um, over here, um, based on the last GE, uh, there is no female, um, you know, ministers at all. Um, and there are also other delegates from Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, Mongolia, Korea, and all that. And each of these countries, um, I feel, you know, as, a, as one of the other delegates, that they have like president, like Aquino, you know, they have, um, you know, Indonesian had women president and now Thailand. Um, and if you are, say, elected president, uh, what would, act, would you actually do to actually encourage women to perhaps enter into politics or take a um, you know, higher decision-making role? Thank you. Anybody want to go first? You need more time to think since you're meant. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, I yes, we okay. we'll, we'll have uh, I would like to hear the views of women on what you think should be done. Dr. Tan. Well, I think as... Uh, Beware, your, your wife is here. I know. <laughs> I can't remember who said it, but I think it's a very wise saying that uh, women hold up half the sky, right? Mao Sorry? Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong. I'm not a Marxist. 
But I think that's a very true. And women should play a full role in Singapore society at all levels. Okay. Well, the same thing. I mean, if they feel it, if they feel that they have been handicapped, then remove the handicaps. I am sure that you know we interact with women, and they know they they have valuable views as well. So uh, no one is got, no. I don't think there's any pre anything that prevents women from coming forward. It's just the certain social handicaps or whatever. If this stand in your way, let us know. Let the president know. I think if there's any cause that we can champion, why not to remove the handicaps? Thank you. Actually, well, I do encourage women to come out into the political arena. But of course, as a president, I cannot do all that for you. But really, women should come out. The, and I, I, I must say that Singapore women have done a very good job. You all are, you all are in, the, uh, in, a, in a very sizable uh, proportion of our workforce and also at the management level. And if you look at some of our very top people, they are all in Singapore. Some of the top uh, CEOs are women. So I wouldn't say that the women in Singapore are not, are not so forceful. Maybe we are referring to the political arena. Well, I, I, I think that's a diffi difficult area for women in Singapore because the commitment is really very heavy. So you've got to get the permission of your husband. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Yes, yes, yes please. I am fully confident that one day we will have a female prime minister or a female president. It will yeah. come. Good, yeah. good. I agree with you.